What's happening everyone? Welcome to Thursday Night Airbrush Down Dirty Tricks. We're a few minutes late, of course, like two seconds in, right before the start. It was, this one was being glitchy, but it is what it is. So hopefully the sound is good. Hopefully that's not a problem this evening. We shall find out. Actually, I put this here so I can actually hear it. Hey, hear my voice? Yeah, that sounds normal. Good. Now I don't to hear that. <laughs> Cool. All right, let's see what we got here. So the video looking. It paused when you took your headphones out. Ah. Good, good, good. London Penn, Mike of Cohen, look over to the feed. We different. Yeah, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this has been a day. Uh, to try to get ready for this, I was doing about an hour and a half ago. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get food. I'm going to take care of trash, and then I had some paint in my trash, and that spilled on my driveway. And for those who say Kratex, sometimes it's a stick to stuff. You don't know what you're talking about, so I had to get the pressure washer to get it off the driveway. Then I ate, then I came up here, then it was glitchy. So, let's see how this works out. <laughs> Let me show you what I got going on this evening. Let me bring up my reference image here. Uh, this is what I'm going to be doing. I think that's the biggest image I have. Do I have? No. Cool. So this is actually a hibiscus plant in my backyard. Um, and I love how Dennis Matthewson, whenever I put these, he, he laughs that they actually grow here. Uh, um, yeah, they grow for a few months and then we either have to bring them inside or we have to replace them every season because winter kills them. Uh, but they grow pretty easy. Um, because we have very, when, in the summer in Massachusetts, despite the fact that our winters are super cold, they get very, very warm and very, very humid in the summer. Very similar to uh, the like tropical conditions. Yeah, we get that hot, humid. So they do really well uh, for a few months, and then uh, and then they don't. So, but we put these in the pool, and they look great. And so I figured, uh, what the hell? I was walking around the outside, getting ready for this weekend because we're having family over for my birthday and Father's Day weekend, so I was taking some pictures and and uh, said, ah, oh, this might make a good painting. Um, so why not give it a shot and something a little bit different? So let me show you what I've got going so far. If anyone's got any questions or comments, get them in. And uh, I'm going to be a lot of heads down on this one, so I'm relying on Kaylee to um, uh, keep an eye on the comments. Mm -hmm. No, Mike, that's not a stock image. That's from my backyard. Uh, I took those pictures of my iPhone on portrait mode, and um, those are great. And out front, we actually have, um, what are the ones out front? Oh, the peonies out front. Oh, I love those. The peonies out front are like, massive. they're like this big. They're huge. It's big in my head, and but they last like two days, and every year they bloom, and they get big, and they're like, you know, maybe, they you know, waist height, and... Yeah. Uh, then a rainstorm comes through and just destroys them. It happens every year. So. They're super fragile. Like, <laughs> they're we really fragile. Flowers, so the other uh, magenta flowers, which I have no clue what they are, those also, like, first rainstorm, they start, they don't get fully destroyed like the peonies, but they start, like... Oh, those are the, the, um... Oh, uh, what are those? What are, what are those? I've painted those before in tattoos, like tattoo designs. Um, anyway, it'll come to me. But, uh, but yeah, so we have those. And, uh, yeah, so... This is right from my backyard, so I figured, what the heck. So let me show you, let me bring up the image here and what I got going on. So I have my reference photo here I on my Vision Air. My Vision Air mount. Uh, I put the reference mount holder up, which actually has clips you put an iPad and stuff, which is great. Um, so I'll show you what I did. And this is a trick I learned from uh, Daniel Powers' video. So I went to the photo in Photoshop and I picked out and I just did a selection and did a color dropper. So I picked out a bunch of the primary colors on the piece and just kind of dropped them. If I wanted to be super photorealistic, those of you who know me, I don't give a, uh, that'd be nice. I, I don't go for full photorealism. I never have. It's just not my thing. Um, it's not like I can't do it. It's just, it's. To me, I want to put my own spin on things. It's just how I always was. But I still like to have that reference point and say, okay, well, that's the dark, that's the mid. And I just do a color picker. And then I also do that black and white. And if you see how that's kind of blocky, that's that same posterized method I talked about when I did the Iwo Jima piece 
kind of blocks everything out. I just did like nine different grays. You know, if, if you look really close, see how it looks really blocky? And that just kind of helps isolate shadows and shapes and things like that. So uh, these are my two reference images that I did. And I almost, it's actually funny, I, I actually did a full vector of this this afternoon. And uh, they do look like morning glories. Um, So yeah, I did a full vector this afternoon, and uh, I'm like, ah, I'm just not going to do vector, because it was looking too crisp, and I didn't like the way all the background was looking, so I'm going to keep it really loose, and just go from a traditional uh, mix of freehand and paper cut technique. Uh, so we'll have a surfboard to do, with the thing about different similar, let's shit. Cool, man. Yeah, like, and I've done hibiscus vectors before, and I have some. I probably got, I, I got to do a whole flower series, so I've done roses. Um, but I should do a whole bunch like peonies and hibiscus and just the common ones, um, and do a whole collection because like, you know, surfboards, skateboards, I've done like tiki's with them around and they just come in handy, especially with the roses. The rose one always comes really handy. Um, so let's see here. Um, I can't get my three up. Kaylee on the, can you open macros? So go into Black Magic. Okay. That's the, the one that's yep. This. Click on that. Maybe. Just click on that area. Just click on the area. Go up to the drop. It says macros. Yep, top. The very top row. The very top row of the computer. Oh. <laughs> macros. See where one says three up face? Click it. See if it works. Yeah, there it is. It's not working, huh? No. Nothing's working. Yes, you have to hit run. Not create. No, don't hit create. I didn't. Okay. Hit run. I hit run. That's not doing anything. No. Oh, God, that, that just opened YouTube. I don't know how you opened YouTube, but you did. Whatever. Okay, so I'm just going to leave it on this view. And for everything else, it's just not working. Actually, there we go. I can do it manually this way. Okay. So now will it work? That'll work, that'll work. Okay, I gotta work around. All right, so that's what I got going on. Damn technology, see, I try to make it really cool and interactive and it just makes it harder for me. Whatever, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, I got Brother Todd over on Facebook. How's it going, man? Uh, Wisteria Flowers. Oh, Wisteria Flowers would be a really cool tutorial as well, yeah. Orchid, yeah, I have, we, we kind of collect orchids here. Um, we have a uh, greenhouse greenery near us at his orchids are amazing, and Crystal loves them, so we have them all over the house. So I do have some beautiful pictures of orchids. So yeah, orchids would be cool. Wisteria would be really cool. I love uh, um, yeah, that's something I'll, I'll probably maybe I'll start putting those together this summer, and maybe do a cu couple different collections. Uh, those of you who haven't go on to McKay Fine Art, get the rose collection. The rose collection comes in super handy. Um, but yeah, Jason, that, that that's a good call. Wisteria, Kelly, write that down so I don't forget that uh, Wisteria. Um, I love wisteria flowers. They are one of my favorite flowers. They're very good. So yeah, pretty. that's cool. I can't remember the look off the top of my head, but they're the um, hanging ones. Oh, they're like the purple the, hanging ones. The... <laughs> yeah, I, they actually have fake ones, like fake decorations, lot decorations ones on Amazon. That a lot of people buy and like put in their rooms, and it always looks really pretty. Ah, all right. So let me show you what I got going on. I've done this to death, so I'm not. I did it ahead of time. You can go back and watch the videos. Um. An orchid and skull would be a great video. That would be cool. That would be very cool. Um, so what I've done, I've done this transfer method to death on my videos. I did it with the Rancor. I've done it with a whole bunch. I'm not going to go spend too much time. Oh, excuse me. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, super soft pencil. This was like a 4 or 6B on the back of the paper. And then after I'm done, I just take, the, take a paper towel and just kind of smooth it out so it's not too cakey. And then I transfer, you know, put it down, and it's my own carbon paper. I don't like carbon paper itself because it doesn't interact well with urethane clears, uh, especially in the long term. Everyone's like, oh, it's fine. Yeah, six months in the sun, it's not fine. So when I do work for vehicles and clients, I want things to uh, hold up forever, uh, if possible. So I think about long term, not short term. Um, so a lot of times, the... the um, 
a lot of that carbon paper has a problem down the road. Uh, and Sorel, I find Sorel is too cakey. Like, I love the way Sorel works. They have the white and the blue. Um, but it leaves such a thick material behind. I don't love it. I've loved it less and less over the years. So more and more often, I have gone with this method uh, for light colored surfaces. And believe it or not, I've taken just regular old chalk. It chalked the back of a paper and then done it with regular classroom chalk. Uh, and I get uh, the best results. So that's just how I do it. So I transferred it, took a pen, and drew it on here. Yo, and now if you look here, like I'm just going for like block out shape, like this stuff, like here and here. And that's actually transferring the image. And I'm just trying to get that, you know, basic transferred. So if you look really close, let's go to camera two here. I think you guys can see it pretty well. So now you can see. It's light enough where I can work with it. Um, it's actually like when you see it, it's really like pronounced. I can barely, I can hardly see it. So it's um, it's just just right. And so I keep things really really simple. I have a blue moon with stereo. Oh, that's cool. Hey, Jason, if you got really good pictures of it, man, send me some pics, man. I, you know, I'll give you credit for the pics, and I could use them for the vectors. Um, you know, you can do Scott at thinairgraphics.com, uh, T H I N A R G R A F X.com. And uh, yeah, that could be something I can work towards. So, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to isolate the two flowers and I'm just going to cut the silhouette just so I can start getting some pink and some freehand in there. Um, and who knows how this one's going to work? I don't know if I'm going to finish this tonight. I'm not really trying to finish it. I just want to have a fun feed and go into Father's Day weekend and my birthday and just kind of relax and chill. So what I'm going to start with is I'm just going to cut the silhouette. I got my cutting mat down. I'm not cutting this on the surface. Now, if I was on a car or a bike, I probably would have just done transfer tape. Transfer tape the whole surface and uh, then just started doing the cut work you know, directly on the car. That's how I always did it in the past before I started using the plotter. Uh, I just try to avoid that more nowadays just because, you know, like I talk about, I want cars to last for as long as possible. When you cut directly on the car, and I've had it happen a slight amount, but I've seen it happen in others worse than like my own work. Um, if you cut too deep, man, the car sits in the sun a lot, you end up seeing those cut marks start to swell because the person cut down through the primer. And not, obviously everyone doesn't do that, but there's a potential, even me, I've been doing this for so long, but you get a little heavy hand to these blades, they go through your base coat, your primer, into the steel. You don't know what that thing's gonna do six months sitting in the sun. And like where I'm from, it's not as bad. We only have a few months of sun. But you got that car out in Vegas or California. Uh, I'm hearing an overtime video. It's like multiple parts. You're not gonna finish. Oh, okay. I thought you were actually here. <laughs> Thanks, Marshall. I thought you were actually here in my overtime video from last week. I was like, what the hell is going on with the sound? I'm like paranoid about my sound now because of the past you couple said weeks. One time. No, it's been two times. But that one was bad. But they were both the same. No, no, see, you were here for overtime. Overtime started doing it, too. Oh, no, really? And then I had to start it over again. I didn't and know that. That was when I, when well, I was... Well, you were in school. Which, oh, Kaylee's not in school anymore. She just I finished... finished today. I am officially a senior. She finished her last day. Her last day of her junior year is done. Now she's officially a senior next year. Now I'm officially an old man. And now I have to worry even more about colleges. Now she really, yes, she has to f really focus on applications now. Just like UMass Amherst, application fee is eighty dollars, and the U Penn, which is an Ivy League, is eighty five dollars, which is kind of insane. Here's the thing: that money is relative. When you see what college tuition costs, you're like eighty bucks. That's like that's like tipping a dollar at a club. But so the thing is, ah. U Penn is a lot more expensive. Well, that's how they get you. That's UMass how they get you. Amherst, but it has almost it's barely more than. 
Or no, Harvard's eighty-five. That was it. Harvard's eighty-five dollars. <laughs> No, so then you gotta. Yes, no. So, and like, this might be an overtime video. I'm gonna be honest. It, it ain't gonna be an overtime video tomorrow because, like I said, I'm going into the weekend. Uh, we've invited family over and friends and stuff. So, um, I'm gonna be getting the house ready. And if it doesn't freaking rain, because it looks like it's gonna rain. Yeah. Uh, so, we'll see, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. All right. So, what I did is you notice I just cut the silhouette for now. I'm gonna save the flowers. And I kind of did, if you notice what a tattoo artist does, this is the shape, the hard lines, I made lines, where it's cast shadows, I did dot, 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 dot. You see a lot of tattoo artists doing that, and you can actually see this barely in the image here. That lets me know where the shading is. So, but I'm just going to hit that on here. And this is where everyone goes, how can you stick to aluminum? The trick is I'm not. But these neodymium magnets, oh, I said that without stuttering, um, will actually penetrate or grab through the aluminum panel I have here into this steel plate. Because this is a steel plate down here. Um, and these, even these little guys will kind of grab, even though they're not really great magnets. They'll still, they're enough where I can get some color in there and still kind of keep it crisp around the outside edge. Another trick, which was, is, it's kind of an old school illustrator's trick. Um, and I just want to keep this. Because my print does not go as far. Um, I think Alan Pastrana uses this trick a lot, too. In some of the other guys. Is if you don't have magnets, get a, get a hole punch. Like a single hole punch. And just go click, 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 click. Like on the outer edge. And then you can tape inside here. And cover all the holes you did, but it, you get a really crisp thing. I, I got to do a feed on that one one night, and uh, we'll show it to you. All right, so let me do this. I'm gonna bring up the reference and get my ugly mug off there. Uh, Kaylee, can you drop the reference image into number? I think it's number twenty into number two. Yep, there you go. The macro is not working properly on that. So that's the image. That's the image we're working with. And I have my reference over here. And I have my maker's mark over here. Uh, let's see. Who do we got on I haven't looked at Facebook at all. I don't know if you've been on Facebook. I've ever seen my brother talk. Mr. Styles was on here. I'm not sure if he's still on there. If you want to see. What's up? Ken Sellers, how you doing, man? John... No, iPad, I don't want to update my YouTube app right now. Leave me alone. All right. Let's talk about colors. So if you look here, I kind of did this chart, and then I made my own variants. So the colors I've used is I've used Illustration Magenta, which is kind of right, which is right here. Um, I've And I put a little bit of uh, Illustration Cream color in there. And then I did a darker version where I did some, I added some red violet and a few drops of black. Uh, I am not doing this as a full follow along how to follow me step by step. This is my variation on it. Um, I actually did an orange, which it might be kind of hard to see. But if you look in areas like here in the reference, there's some peachy kind of orange mix. So I'm going to use that a little bit. The white is cream mixed with a few drops of orange and like two drops of yellow just it, maybe it looks white on camera but if you look when i'm when i do photoshop and look at these there's nothing in there um and then there's some yellow i'm going to mix in at the end and actually kaylee can you grab me that yellow at the end of my bench and then the greens i did the same thing i just made, made a few different greens i used um the yellow green oxide to start I mixed a little frog juice into that. That is a name. Frog juice? Yeah, frog juice. Um, and then a little bit of black and sepia for like this kind of muddy green color. Which I know on cameras doesn't look pretty, but it's going to be nice to overshadow the green in here. And that's just kind of my baseline. Um, so yeah, so let's just... We'll just see how this goes. <laughs> I'm starting with the magenta. 
Um, and like I said, I have the line work here, so I'm going to kind of follow those first. And kind of build off of them. But remember, I can cut these apart and use them as, as soft stencils if I want. And I'm just kind of looking towards the photo. I can even look towards my um, kind of these heavier. And I can kind of see how things are blocked off and I can block off like that. I'm just going to kind of work from it. Just more freestyle and just end up where I want to end up. Um, if I was doing full photos, blah, 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 blah. If I was doing full photorealism, I would dissect this a little bit more. Um, but I don't, like I said, I don't want it. I want to just kind of freestyle it and just kind of make my own kind of version of it. And it's more of an illustration and go from there. So, like, I know it's darker down in here. So I can kind of hit these areas. And I can start building some tone. And I can start kind of bringing those vines down, like vines, veins. I'm going to just zoom in here. Uh, I think I might need a little bit more exposure on that. How about that? There we go. It's not actually good at adjusting these photos. So long little dagger strokes. And I'm just kind of mimicking what I see. And look, when you're doing stylized realism, you're really just going through kind of picking out um, I'm picking out the detail I want to see. I'm just kind of working with it. And I go light to dark. I don't want to do dark to light. And I do that when I do like fire. So I start the dark tones. But like I'm starting with this. And I just keep checking into my photo reference. And then I see what I kind of want to see, and then I work to the next one. And that's really how I like to do work like this. This is where I can take a little bit of this pink, and then I can go in with the eraser right now if I want. And I can kind of add this is the great time to add some little lines. So like right here, if I look at the photo, like this part of the photo reference, see it's got a really nice bright spot. So I can kind of fog that in with pink. Now watch. Now I can take this. And I can just kind of brighten that up. And bring the whole that side of the petal just back to the foreground. Same thing in here. And this is all just little, little details. Sherry Chandler, how you doing? Hi, Mom. Mom's on. Gerald Mendez is on. Oh, good. Gerald's on. I'm doing pink. I haven't started the green in the background yet. So even though I'm mainly known as like an automotive illustrator, 
painter, where not illustrator of automotive like paintings, but I put do a lot of work on motorcycles, custom cars. I use a lot of traditional like illustrator techniques, and I love kind of integrating techniques. I love integrating techniques from the illustration field, from the fine art field. Um, you know, from people who do portraits and like realism, and kind of mixing that up into the automotive culture. We use transparency candies and flakes and pearls. It just kind of mix all those together, um, so you can you can get to the final result you like. So like, I'm not gonna do photorealism on a car because most customers don't want photorealistic on a car. They want something that's got pop and a little bit more. And I, I'm gonna say artistic flair, not because photo, photorealism isn't artistic. But they want more of a stylized realism. They want that pop and, and a little bit more uh, fantasiful look to it. Um, so I like using as many techniques as possible. So just because you see someone, say like Drew Blair, who does scratching and erasing on an illustration board, well, I can't do that on a motive. Well, yes, you can. Now, you might have a different result. You might have to back it a little bit different or do a different color order. But the technique still works. You just figure out how to adapt it. Uh, techniques who do illustration on an illustration board, guys who do pinstriping, all that stuff comes into play. You can do a little bit of all of it. So um, that's kind of how I've always really approached it. And just kind of used a bunch of different methods to the degree where I like it. You know, it doesn't have to match a photo. Because when you see this, when you see um, a painting in a museum of uh, a ball of fruit. Do you have the photo reference next to it? No. You look at the painting and how cool it looks. Um, it might look nothing like the original. But you just see a really cool painting and that's more what I concern myself with. And let's face it, I do a lot of customer work for commercial. Does the customer like the painting? Does it, um, does the painting show what they expected, like what they wanted? So I keep this paper up here. I'm going to pull this off to my own detriment, maybe, but just so you can see. Everyone on Facebook, I mean, everyone on YouTube getting the feed good. I don't know if the chat just stalled, if everyone's watching, or if there's been an issue, so. But I'll just show you what I'm getting here. I'm getting this nice, clean. Oops. Maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe I shouldn't do this. I'll pull it fast. It's like a Band-Aid. So look, so now I have a nice soft but kind of crisp edge along the edge, and I'm going to continue to get that. Then I'm not going to finish these. I'm going to come. I'm going to put the put the uh, silhouettes back, and then I'm going to work on the green. And I'm going to get to that. I've talked about it in many and many of my videos. Um, I get to that mid tone kind of happy place where everything's kind of there, and then I can just start freehanding from there. All right, so I'm going to be pretty bright right here. I'm going to work around this one because this one's going to overlap. I'm trying to do as much freehand as I can. And then maybe I'll cut back in later. Oh, good. Just watch it. Good. Thank you. But this is my approach, like, when a customer comes in and says, oh, like, I got a motorcycle car, you know, I'm doing a memorial piece or whatever, and I want some flowers, and I want this. This is kind of the level I get into with them. Not too much past here. 
Here's here. Fash has already finished up her first year of college. Wow, Scott, that's crazy. Where'd she end up going? So I'm going to do my mid here, because then I'm going to come in and I'm going to darken that um, with this color. I want to make these more of a magenta -y color than the photo reference, a little bit more pinky. Um, but my printer kind of sucks, so. Find it with Dennis is. Dennis could critique me. Oh, cool. So anyone who's on Facebook, if you can, abandon Facebook, get over to the YouTube video. The YouTube uh, feed typically is much smoother, even though it's the same feed. YouTube, I mean, uh, Facebook kind of tends to choke things down a little bit, so you're not getting the same quality. The same quality video. So just when I'm doing these like card blackout shapes, I'm really, I'm just looking at the photo reference. And if I was in, I, I literally, I started this around two o'clock today, three o'clock today with getting the photo ready and everything out. So if I was to actually do this as like a lesson plan, I would have this broken down into more uh, strategic, like block this, block this, block this shape, do this versus, um, you know, how I'm doing it now, which, how I'm doing it now is kind of how I normally work. And that's kind of the myth, some, not myth, but when we teach lessons at workshops, a lot of times, um, we're not dummy proofing them, but we're trying to make them, we're trying to take a lot of the tedious work out of it, or at least kind of get it so it's not so tedious. So we'll, we'll like either pre-cut or we'll kind of map out like cut this first, cut that second. And I'm not saying step by step it, but we kind of do to a degree. But if I was doing this for a client, this is kind of how I'd be doing it. What's F A? Kelly, what's F A F S A? FAFSA. FAFSA. I don't know what that is. Um, I have no idea. Ah. So there's a lot of water droplets here. We'll probably get into some of those. We're just going to kind of mimic where they are. And we'll do a little bit of those towards the end. Let's get some brush work in there. I'm trying to be careful in here because there's some yellow. But there's. The, like the center of these are very pronounced kind of star. Federal 
Student loans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Cue ball is here. Where's Cubus Delay? He's here. Down and dirty tricksters. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, speaking of which, speaking of which, speaking of which, I do have. Where is this? Um, these, the first two samples came in. So the hats are ready. And I got shirts on order, so if ever sees a store, I have all the merch with different designs. One is like the SEMA style skull, then the, like the Sinister Skull, the paint splatter one. And now we got these guys here, so we got some hats. Yeah, so those are good. The embroidery came out really nice. I'm actually pretty happy with them. For some reason, the um, the only thing is like when you click on the store link, it's not showing in the bottom of YouTube, but when you go to the store, the hats are there if you get into some hats. Standard, standard trucker hat style, black on black. Um, that's the only option I chose, I believe, for these to keep it easy. They're good. If you have big a big head like my brother, or brothers, uh, like Sputnik, um, they're probably a little small as far as the profile, but other than that, they are really nice, and the embroidery is very well done. I'm very happy with it. I'm waiting for the t-shirts and the mats and all that stuff. Cody, what's going on, man? Swag. We'll call it merch, because swag is free from what people think most of the time, so, because it's something we all get, um, but this is not free, so, um, not that I'm making much on it, but it's there for you. Cheers. About to help support the channel. <clears throat> Thanks, Steve. All right, let's get back to what I'm doing here. Here. So, like, I'll show you one thing. Because I don't want to cut these apart too, too much. But I'll show you kind of as I go through. Because we'll see how far I get tonight. Um, and what you can do is instead of cutting it all the way like this, I can cut pieces and then actually have it like a multi-fold stencil. Just don't cut too far into the center. So now, watch what I can do. So now, I can put this back, find the puzzle piece, Wait, wait, wait. Aha, there we go. Nope, there we go. Jeez. So look, I can put that back. And now what I can do is if I want to sharpen where this leaf kind of overtakes a little bit, I can go like this. And I can get a semi-hard edge there. Now, see that? Now it's a nice kind of crisp edge. I can do the same thing to here. So this pedal, this pedal here overlaps this one, as you can see. So now I can fold this back. Just kind of hit that a little harder. A little harder, like you say here in Boston. I can hit that, and I can hit here. And then I'm gonna hit here like this. So now, you get that nice crisper edge where you can see which which pedal overlaps the other. This one here is pretty dark. It's darker mainly in here. But I figured a little slower paced video would be nice. You know, I have it in my head that I gotta finish the painting in two hours on these feeds, but in some of those I want that, but I don't need it to be every single one. Snake, what's going on, man? Thanks for popping in. 
So like right here, this if you look at the photo, you can kind of see it. Let me see if I can bring this down. You can see I'm doing a lot more pink style, but I'm gonna I'm starting here. But when I get to that next magenta red color, it's gonna get closer to this, and I'm gonna add a little bit of orangey tone and get that kind of peachy. You can kind of see that peachiness in here. Uh, but see how light it is down here, and this will work in right here. Okay, so I want to make sure I, I keep that and make this petal really strong um, by looking at the photo reference, which this is on photo paper and it's a little blurred out, but um, I can I can see it better here in person than you guys can see on camera. Big Mount Customs, what's happening? Thanks, Bill. Appreciate that. Spot there. There's a little spot there. There's some water droplets down here we're gonna mess with later. I'm gonna show you a nice little trick to that that I've shown everyone before with using the reducer and kind of pushing and pulling the water and getting that um just getting that look by uh, taking just reducer instead of paint. This is all right now. I'm just doing magenta, the Createx illustration. Oh, Bill, pocket graphics, those which I haven't even broken them out yet here, uh, but I will soon. Uh, anywhere I want to, it aren't too extensive to sold. So, Coast Airbrush sells them. Um, you can order and like anywhere that sells Iwata and Artua products can have them because that's who they distributed through. Um, I always tell people to go to Coast. They're usually the best priced on it. Uh, Maple in Canada. Um, you can get them on Amazon too, but Amazon, everyone on Amazon who sells them seems to be upcharging them um, more than they should because we don't have any control over that. Um, you know, we sell them at a baseline and then people on Amazon do what they want. People on Amazon have been raising... If you haven't noticed, start looking at prices of other places. Amazon's been raising a lot of a lot of prices lately where you're not even looking anymore because you're so used to buying from Amazon. Keep an eye on your stuff you've been buying a lot of. So they seem to be raising the price on that and then like cheap on the other stuff. Jockey Solomon McKay. Same last day, man. That's cool. <laughs> Are you using Trampant Mixture? So I'm actually just using a straight out of the Illustration Magenta, which the Illustration Magenta is pretty transparent. It's not like the opaque. But I didn't do anything to it. Like I didn't add any 40, 50, or 40, 30 to it. This is pretty much straight, which is a little bit of reducer for flow. So I'm running it through my Micron. It's amazing, uh, for an hour, like last week, I could do like 20 skulls. Well, awesome, man. I'm sure lighted somewhere down the line. Most of my Scottish heritage moved from Scotland to Nova Scotia at some point in our history. Thank you for popping in. My mom and dad have been over there a few times. I have yet 
to go over. But it's on my short list. Thank you for popping in to my channel. Actually, you'll recognize this logo then. Uh, I don't know if you can, not logo, but our coat of arms. You can just, I can't even, you probably can't see it. There you go. Can you see it? Nope. No, nope. there you go. I had these made up a couple of years ago. I redrew the crest with a little bit of a longer dagger. So you recognize that one. Uh, ba -ba -ba. I think then, uh, you'll be able to see it in a sec. Uh, ba -ba. How do I like to do I want to, I love it. So this, I'm using the Takumi Micron here. But most of my videos the past few weeks, I've been using, um... Sherry, thank you for popping into the YouTube channel. Much, much appreciated. Jockey, send me a friend request, and, um, I'll send you... I can actually send you the file if you want to have one made up for yourself. Try to keep them in the family. Thanks for popping into the YouTube feed, Sherry. Oh yeah, some 3D printing stuff. Actually, speaking of 3D printing, I did this today on the resin printer. Might have to do this on a paint video soon, so check this out. Where's uh, the skull? It's a Darth Maul skull. It's cool. Look at that thing. Things. It's about as big as my resin printer can go. I gotta just shave the bottom, but this would be a cool one to have. Made up. So here's the thing, like I usually, you know, you guys all know I do a lot of skulls, I do a lot of demons, I do a lot of this. But, you know, doing motorcycles and custom cars and rods for years, you're gonna do a little bit of everything. So, uh, you should try to like learn how to do as much as possible. You gotta come across rows, you gotta come across flowers, you gotta come across portraits. So, you know, you really wanna try to get as much things under your belt, even things you're uncomfortable with. Like, this is probably the, aside from like portraits of, of like children, um, this is probably for me, like the flowers and stuff is probably the most nerve wracking to do. But we'll do live and if I fail, here's the reality check. But you'll see how much longer this takes, even, you know, I'm going to use the term professional painter. Um, versus like the everyday stuff. You know, the stuff we do basically in our sleep. Let's see, I can do skulls in my sleep. I think that's about as much as I'm going to do on that row, that flower. Then I'm going to come into here. Well, I always forget that it's the Hawaii State flower. Oh, yeah. Like I said, the first time I posted a picture of Dennis Masters and called me, he's like, he's like, how do you have those up there? <laughs> we have a lot of stuff up here. We can have a lot of stuff up here that you guys can have. Like, we can have palm trees. We just can't have them for long. No, that's why, like... Well, no, we can't palm. grow palm trees here. They have to be brought in. We don't have, like, oh, any... Oh, well, yeah, but, like, they, like, we have a palm tree in a pot at our house, and it could technically survive outside during the summer. But, like... Yeah. It's because it's a tree. 
you wouldn't bother planting one because it would die in the winter. You can see right here, this has got a really nice fan pattern right here. So I'm just going to work on that for a little bit. Oh, I got water down here. Yeah. Yeah, be fine. Ooh, I'm going to have to recut that. It's okay. We make it work. We make it work. So like if I vectored this, like I was doing earlier, I already have the roses done. Um, yeah, which is why I try to do them like this in the feet so we can get through faster. I just wanted to show you guys a natural approach to um, something that's not so planned out as a class. Where it's just, this is how I would paint it as a one-off for a client. It's I'm not making it like a mass production class where everyone can achieve it within you know, a few hour session. That would be easy to do. <laughs> oh, 2 a.m. over there, man. Thanks for popping in and checking it out. I take it if you have three, two Ender 3s, you're probably watching one print right now. <laughs> or checking on it. I was doing a project with my wife this week and showing her that once, like a two, once a day and a half print gets done, like started, you just have to constantly <laughs> check on it. But I haven't done the webcam yet. I don't want to know midnight. Like, if I put a camera on it on my 3D printer, I would never sleep because I'll keep checking it. It's funny, I mix up this all this green over here. I'm probably not even going to get to the green tonight. <laughs> Rainbow eucalyptus trees. Oh my god, those are so cool. Have those you ever cool. seen them? Have you ever seen them, Dad? Yeah. Long day working in the sun. Yeah, man. Grab a beer, take a break, relax. Oh, really? Currents, what's going on, brother? Tyler was one of my grade A best pupils when we were doing the circus. An amazing striper. Thanks for popping in, brother.
I'm good, Tyler. I'm good. Thank you very much. But realistically, so these two, the focal of the image is these two flowers. Thomas Thompson, thank you, my friend. Much, much appreciated. Thank you for that super chat. And we'll give you a nice little crowd cheer. Thank you, sir. So, my focus is here. So I spend the majority of the time here. If I get these right, it doesn't really matter what the background looks like. Shh. As long as it looks kind of... Because you can make it cool like a boker out of focus. Just make sure these look good and the whole thing comes together. So this is where you spend your time. So like I'm starting to lose the stem. I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do here. Like the center. So I'm gonna kinda of get this worked out. Then I'm going to take my electric eraser. I'm going to bring this stem right back. And I can bring more of it later, so I'm not. But I can just make sure I don't lose it, because if I put too much paint down, it's going to be hard to get it back. This one is not as important, but I am starting to get a little bit too pinky there. So what I'm going to do, and we'll zoom in here. There we go. And we're going to zoom in right on that. So watch. So I'm trying to do this, which is going to be yellow later. But I don't want to get them too pink now. Too much paint saturation would be hard to bring them back. So at this point, it's a good time to take the eraser and just kind of, kind of bring them back to life. Because they've got a little pom-pom and they got stem, pom-pom stem. So they're just bringing it back. I don't want to get too far away from the white. If I get too far away from the white, it's going to be hard to get it back later. And while I'm up here, I can focus in on some of this stuff. <laughs> it's a stamen. Oh yeah, we've had this discussion before we about have. stamen. We've talked about stamen before. Many times. I, it doesn't sink in, but thank you for reminding me. It's stamen, everyone. This little thing is stamen. I'm just saying, zooming is best for us to see. Good camera work is mandatory. Yeah, I'm, the, the new camera setups are doing pretty well. Yeah, let me switch out. Let me see if I can go to the top down one. 
and let's see if we can zoom in. I'm, this lens doesn't quite go as far. No, no, we're gonna go back to this one here. This one's got a, a lens can handle a little bit more. And if you don't have one of those, you can use a regular stick eraser or you can use a, a blade. And do some very fine veins. And I think they're showing up on camera a little bit. And these little things like this, even if you're not seeing them well here, when you go through and finish this painting and you go to clear it, you start running layers. Whoever owns this painting is going to be able to like see these, the little depth. You know, they're going to see all these little, all these little pieces of, of work. That's just going to make it that much nicer. I could have, I could, like I said, I could have rammed through this pretty quick and just made it look cool. Kind of tattoo-y or custom paint. I kind of want that hybrid mix of, yeah, it's kind of photorealistic, but not really. Um, the one thing I really do want to do, you know one of these prints, Kaylee? There's a nice shadow. Black and white, good. Yep. And the photo reference, see the shadow hole? What's that? Warlock. OMG, Scott makes things other than Scott. Yes, I do. So see this whole silhouette right here? Where it does this? This is the key I want to get. In order to get it, I'm going to take this. Because I have this here. Hi, Warlock. So now I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to focus on that shadow because I really want to capture that shadow really does something for this piece. There you go. Now you can see. Sorry. Now, I said I really want to get that around the stamen. I don't want to call it the wrong thing and get yelled at. <laughs> I had to. So now, like I said, I can put this back and line it up. And I can just hit that. I sort of zoomed out for that, sorry. And that's gonna help with everything, kinda key into the actual photo reference.
Taylor and John Smiles going. Just painting some hibiscus flowers. Nice. Something a little different. Which is funny. I should have done this during like Mother's Day, but I'm doing it during Father's Day. But it is what it is. See now, I got enough of this. I'm gonna pull this tape. We're not gonna be doing any of the green tonight because I just don't have it in me. Oh, so that means Gerald won't show up. What's that? That means Gerald won't show up. No, Gerald already showed up earlier. Oh, he did? Jason oh, Bell, what's going on? Gerald won't show up again. No. Oh, that's cool. We'll be at SEMA this year. Yeah, I plan on being at SEMA. Me and some of the company, some of the booths were discussing a few options. The other day, as a matter of fact, so. Hope to be there. So this is enough where these are in, so I'm going to work these for a little bit more, and then I can take these, and we can cover. And then I can green out the background and start worrying about here, and really start um, getting it toned in. That is the key to this process. Even the one I cut here, even though I cut all the petals, it all lined back up. And now I can work on the green area. Now, like if I was doing this on a car or a motorcycle, if I was doing a bunch of them, I would vector this. Especially at least vector these shapes so I can push and pull and on and off as much as I much as I want. Oh, very cool. I'm gonna be doing some work with Trulers too. I was speaking with Jack about uh, SEMA, so. I hope to be doing some stuff there and maybe doing a live stream from SEMA. Will be the plan. Why go, Cohen? Thank you, my friend. Thank you, sir. You guys, help this thing keep on running. But now that this here, I can just kind of take the mask off and see what I'm doing. Even if I want to freehand around the edge, I can. You know what I want to do? I'm going to dump out one magenta. And this is going to seem a little crazy. And go a little orange in here. And this, I'm going to be very careful here. I don't want to do a lot. I just want to get a little bit of that kind of peach tone. And this orange has a little bit of the same magenta in it. And you'll see what this kind of does to that white area. Very transparent. See how subtle that is? It's just a nice, just kind of starts to brighten it up a little bit. I 
instead of now instead of being that one color, it just has that little bit of peachiness to it. Then when I start cutting back in with white, or when I start doing more racing, and it's good for the stamen. Big Mountain Customs. <laughs> because I already start to get that yellowish uh, orangey tone in there. So now when I go with the eraser, it's really white. Because it's against the pink. And that kind of orangey tone. And then cut back, you know, that same color. And it just gets a really cool, cool look to it. Almost watercolory. And if I get, I'm not worried if I get a little overspray out here, the green's gonna really overpower it, so. Cool, cool, cool. <laughs> I think it's gonna stick this time, man. I think it's gonna stick. <laughs> And this is, I have been recording. I think this will make a nice how-to if I break it down and edit it. I'm getting better with the editing. I don't know if any of you guys caught. Did you guys catch the, um, the how to make the paint strainer? If you go to my last video, I just uploaded how to make a quick paint strainer. Super cheap. And those will last you forever because you can keep replacing the screen for pennies. I recommend the video a lot. And I'm actually going to take my darker mix, which is uh, kind of the, which is the magenta mixed with a little purple and a couple drops of black. I'm going to hit a little bit of the darker areas just to kind of get proof of concept. And I can actually go to my photo reference here, and like I said, this is what I learned from um, Dan Powers. So that photo reference now can kind of go. How close is this color? It gets a little pinky. So I can darken it up if I want, but if I like it, it's fine. Like I can go over it. It's a nice way to check. Yeah, so now I can go in here to the center where it starts to get dark. But not, it's not overly dark, it's just, just starting. If I can just start carving that out. Definitely gonna do some brush work on this piece as well. Yeah, it's really it is. It's a simple build, um, but it's really just you know sometimes the simpler stuff. Can bit damage the fastest. You just gotta take your time, just kind of let it happen. If you force it, it kind of it can get it can go south really fast. <laughs> ah, you're not late. You're just in for the you know more detailed stuff, man. You can see now, I just, by, by bringing that stencil, I just carve that edge. It starts to make that edge of the petal nice and soft. And I can come in and put some of the little wrinkles in it. Like, I'm definitely going more, like, pink to white than I am for, like, the, the, the red here. But I'm, you know, I am going to take some, 
you know, some get some red mixed into this magenta towards the end and really get the center to be like that. So I'm going to go for like 10 more minutes. I want to call it a night, everyone. I know I'm not going to finish this, so I'm not going to stretch it in two hours. I got a party to plan for this weekend. Get the house in order, get the pool in order, get the yard in order, all that fun stuff. Juan. What's that? Dude named No Juan. Oh, dude, I love that name. That's no amazing. Juan. I That's that name is awesome. Name. Michael Brian, what's going on, brother? Thanks for popping in. People are popping in, going, "What is he painting? That's not him normally. That's not his normal work." This wasn't even a commission. This is just me feeling like painting the flowers that are out in my backyard. Steve, pop on up. Hunt the road now. You'll make it. Sunday. It's my 49th birthday and Father's Day, so we're just going to tear it up at the house. If you're in the area close by, give me a ring. Let me know. Pool party. My pool's at 80 right now. We're good. Peter's been doing his job, even though all this rain, and trying to keep up with it. Thirty-nine. No, not ten years ago. Over the hill next year. Oh, could you use a Gerald texture for the vines? Yeah. So if I want to get a little extra, um. You could definitely use, let's see here. You could definitely use like, I would like take the Texture FX3 and maybe just kind of put a few in there like this, like that. That actually helps really well. It just gets a little bit of, let's see if we can get in here. So I'll put a little bit right here. So I'm gonna look at Tech Effects 3. I'm gonna find an area that kind of works and they spiral out. I'm gonna find something that works here. And you can see just that little bit adds a nice touch. And then I can kind of freehand that texture back out like that. And then if you take some erasing or some scratching. I want this one. Even though that's going back to white, I'm going to be cutting back over it again. So it'll tone back out. But as long as I don't oversaturate it, you'll see that line. And I could make it a little bit more pronounced. Like that. I was almost going to go half this size. Then I was treading too close to Steve Leahy territory of detail. And I ain't no one got time for that. Except Steve. Hmm. 
But yeah, I'm just gonna keep plugging away. And maybe I will do, if I have some time tomorrow, between stuff, maybe I will do an overtime session. You know, it's re You're welcome, Ron. Yeah, you can always do that stuff and just kind of bring that stuff in. Experiment with it and try it, you know. That was such a small area that if I didn't like it, it was easy enough to, to kind of pop out and, like, just get rid of. But I was pretty confident it was going to work. It was a really good idea. Thank you for suggesting it. Look at my photo reference, it's pretty bright right here. Yeah, this one might not even ever go for auction. This might just go, this might have to hang in the homestead. So for your, I'm not sure where you're out of, so it's 8 p.m. here, we're Eastern Standard Time. So you maybe, uh, I'm not sure where you are. If you're in California, yeah, it'd be 5 o'clock on Thursday nights is where I normally start my feeds. Uh, subscribe, you'll be notified when we do it. Um, I typically do it every Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we're starting to do some overtime ones on Friday afternoon. And then I'm getting ready to do Tabletop Tuesdays, which is going to be for the uh, like the miniature gaming figure modeling thing. So, a lot of stuff happening. A lot of stuff planned for the summer, uh, especially on the gaming side. So, if any of you guys are into Tabletop Gaming, especially Warhammer, let me know. Because I'm going to be doing a bunch of that uh, with the new season coming out. Uh, next Saturday is uh, the 10th edition of Warhammer. So, get your geek on. And we're going to start putting that together. And start painting that. We're going to be working with New Worlds paint on that, which is a new Iwata Medea paint. Um, and I think we're going to leave it there tonight. I kind of like this watercolor look vibe I have going on. It's really subtle and clean, which is unlike what I normally do. So I'm really happy with it. Uh, and we are going to leave it at that point this evening. I want to thank everyone for the super chats. Thanks everyone for popping in. All you dads out there or caretakers who take care of kids... Happy Father's Day this weekend. You deserve it. Deserve a little R&R &R time. And uh, we'll get back on this next week. Have an awesome, safe, happy, and healthy weekend. All my friends at Laconia Bike Week. Uh, be safe. Be happy. Enjoy it. I'm not making it up this year. Oh, World of is like, oh, for the gaming model, you should do Diablo 4 model. I do. I have a Diablo 4 model plan. Um, and if you play Diablo 4... You should reach out to me later and give me a Battle.net password and we'll hook up online. So, uh, I will talk to you all. Uh, Nolan, thank you very much. Yep, thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, everyone have an awesome time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, I'm going to go have a drink and relax and get ready for Father's Day weekend and have some fun. So, if anyone's in the area, give me a shout. Come on by. See ya.